I have missed you. All right? And, um, well, we still continue trusting God for better days ahead when we don't have to wear these masks, we don't have to be so far from each other, and we don't have to do all these other things that we have to do. But for now, we want to ask you to just bear with us. I know some of these things, the protocols that we are observing, are rather tedious, and uh, they, they can be almost irritating. But we want to ask to just, just indulge us for this particular season, this particular time. Of course, you know this is not our usual way of doing things, but because of the pandemic, we are required to do some of these things. And again, especially as God's people, I think it's important for us to be prudent because you know that the enemy will want to take occasion and he will want to take advantage of these kind of situations so that he can discredit the name of the Lord. You know, uh, when you look at our politicians, you know them, they don't care. You know, they've been getting people together, especially this past week from the highest office. You know, all of them. You know, but for us, let's be prudent. Let's do things right so that we will not be accused that we became the new center of infections. So for now, please let's bear with one another. Uh, let's cooperate with our frontline, uh, you know, uh, volunteers. The, that is the ushers, the security guys, the welcome team, you know, the cleaners here. So please, as they give you instructions, that please let's move this way, sit there, park there, walk like this, you know, keep your distance. Let's just work with them. Yonisawa, you promise me you will work with them? Amen. Of course, we are, by the way, by doing these things, we are not saying that God is not able. Of course, God is able. But for us, there's a place that we have to be wise and prudent so that God can be able to bless us. Amen. Well, um, are you ready for the word? It's been a long time. It's been very long. But uh, we are back to church. And we are back to preaching the word. Ephesians chapter 6, and I want to bring to us a sermon, which, by the way, I have divided into two. And uh, today I'll just do the first part. We'll see how well we'll do, and then we'll conclude. Next Sunday we'll do part two. So this is part one, and to what I have entitled, Don't Lose It. Don't Lose It. Now, unfortunately, as Pastor Ellie said, it's hard for you to turn to somebody who is 1.5 meters away from you. You know, but just, just try, just look, just look in that direction and say, don't lose it. Don't, don't, don't lose it. Don't lose it. And we'll be going to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And we, I want to do something here, just, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll combine, you know, this particular um, section with the Old Testament. I just want to be able to paint a picture for us. Now, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, is the armor of God. I think this is a very well-known portion of Scripture for all of us. So let's read. Finally, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this, this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Verse 13. Therefore, now, whenever you see the word therefore, is because the author is trying to connect one thought with the next. So remember, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. In other words, our struggle is not against coronavirus. Are you with me? We are involved in a bigger struggle, in a bigger conflict than just coronavirus. So because we are involved in a bigger struggle, he says, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, now, just stop there for a while. When the day of evil comes, and I think we can all agree in this place, we have been living in an evil day. Are you with me? Now, when Bible there talks about when the day of evil is not necessarily 
just a 24 hour period so is the author is not paul here does not just have a, you know uh, just a 24 hour period where you can say by the way yesterday was an evil day it can be a length of time actually as is often the case it's usually a length of time it can be a few days it can be a few weeks it can be a few months it can be a few years so that when the day of evil comes and i want you to keep that thought in your mind you may be able to stand your ground so notice the thoughts there we're involved in a big conflict here therefore we are supposed to put on the full armor of god so that when that now notice what paul paul is saying here he's not saying if the evil day comes he's saying when so one thing you can be sure is that the evil day will come now if you've never had an evil day i think this season of this pandemic has been an evil day for everyone nobody has been spared are you with me so an evil day has come now when we have put on the full armor it's in preparation for the evil day which is going to come whether i like it or not so that okay when the evil, you may be able to stand your ground now notice the choice of words he says so when the, when the day of evil comes you may be able to stand your ground <laughs> and after you have done everything to stand i mean are you getting that now notice he's not saying so that you may, be, may you may fight he says so that you may stand your ground and then having done everything i assume that you will have to do some fighting which you must against those spiritual realms that we talked about then having done all those that you will still be found to be standing are you with me so the standing posture is not just standing for the you know you can you have ever seen somebody who is just standing and they're standing like a statue that's not what he's talking about this standing is an active one so you'll be able to stand do what you need to do but when the battle is over you will still be standing oh come on somebody in this place did you forget how to say amen in those six months all right so that when you have been involved in the conflict you will still be found to be standing I don't know about you but I have I decided for myself at the very beginning that when this battle is over I will still be standing Amen. then so now again verse 14 he said stand firm then something about standing with the belt of truth now then now he paints for us a picture of the armor remember he's using the picture of a roman uh, of, a, of a roman officer an army officer in the roman army he says stand from with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place with your feet i want you to pay note to pay note about this armor right so belt around where your waist with a breastplate of, right, of righteousness where in place protecting your your chest your heart with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of of peace so there's got to be something on your feet in addition to all this take up the shield of faith so in your hands you have on the one hand a shield of faith With, with which you can you can you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of evil one then take the helmet of salvation where is the helmet supposed to be on the head and the sword of the spirit so the other hand so one hand you had the shield of faith and on the other hand you will have what the sword of the spirit and on the head you have the helmet of salvation now the sword of the spirit which is the word of god remember the bible says in hebrews that the word of god is sharper than any double edged sword now and then verse 18 and then now verse 18 now you you're all dressed up in all this armor and then now we are supposed to pray in the spirit when 
on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the saints. I want this. So he, uh, having done all, you're standing, you're standing firm, you have put on the full armor because the day of evil is definitely coming. Right now we're in the day of evil. But then, having put on the full armor, then now you need to engage in prayer. Are you with me? So it's not just a matter of uh, having all the whole armor all over you, but you must also be in a place of prayer. And notice what he says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. Right? Now, I want you, with that in mind, the armor of God, I want us to paint a picture. I'm going to invite your imagination. I want us to paint a picture of exactly how this looks like in the day of trouble. So you're going to turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 6. We'll be considering 2 Kings chapter 6 and chapter 7 because the story that I'm going to refer to begins in, in chapter 6 and ends in chapter 7. And if you're still in chat, say amen. amen. All right? So in chapter 6, in verse 24 there, there is a story there uh, about the famine, a famine that had be besieged Samaria. All right? Now, sometime later, let me just give you the backdrop of this particular conflict here. Sometime later, ben the king of Aram, mobilized his entire army. I'm reading from verse 24. Mobilized his entire army and marched up a, uh, and laid siege to Samaria. There was a great famine in the city. The siege lasted so long that a donkey's head sold for eight shekels of silver and a quarter of cab of seed pods of five shekels. All right, so now that is the scenario right there. Just stop there for a while. So here is the scenario. The city of Samaria is under siege. And the siege basically means nobody left the city. Nobody was allowed to come into the city. Are you with me? Ed, isn't it amazing that we have been under siege for a while? You remember the lockdown? You couldn't leave Nairobi. Some people couldn't even leave Isili. Just across the road here, they had to be, everybody was under siege. Are you with me? It's just that now it has lifted a little bit. Uh, it's only recently that now you can actually be able to, to even do some international travel and be able to leave the country. But there are still some places that are still under siege. I mean, people are not able to leave. They're not able to, to come in because the day of evil has actually come. How many of you ever imagined that you would live to, be, to, to see a day like today? Uh, how many of you have ever lived through a pandemic? I highly doubt it. Actually, pandemics normally happen maybe once every 100 years. You never see it coming. It just happens. I never imagined I could live to see a day that I couldn't come to church for six months unless I'm backslidden. <laughs> I never imagined. But the day of evil is here. Now, in Samaria... For them, it was not a pandemic, but it was uh, uh, ben Hadad, king of Aram, who came and put the city under siege. And this siege lasted so long, we are told, that a great famine gripped the whole city, such that there was no, remember, no food was coming in, no, nobody was living, so you couldn't trade. So because of that, things were so difficult that a donkey's head sold for 80 shekels of silver and quarter of a cup of seed pods for five shekels. In other words, whatever was available. Now, if you think of a donkey's head, I mean, what do you do with a donkey's head except drink soup, probably? All right? But it was so, even coming across one would be so difficult. And the author here is trying to paint a picture of how desperate the situation was. And I think we have seen desperate days also during this, this, uh, this few months when we've gone through this pandemic. Now, that is the picture. That is a scenario. Now, I want you to also just now just pause with me. Remember, we are still painting this scenario. So the day of evil has been, of course, revealed to us in chapter 6. Now, in chapter 7, the same story. We'll be coming back to chapter 6. We'll be jumping to and fro. But in chapter 7, if you come to chapter 7, uh, now we introduce, of course, there, of course, Elisha. This was in the time of Elisha. But from verse 3, we are introduced to a number of people, some guys, four men who remain nameless. This man have leprosy. Are you with me? All right? 
Now, they, now, because of the law of the leper, in that culture, in those days, if you had leprosy, you had to go into quarantine. <laughs> Are you with me? You couldn't stay with the people, so you had actually to be quarantined, and nobody would be allowed near you. In fact, according to the law of the leper, that is in Leviticus chapter 13 and chapter 14, if you are leprous, as you are walking around, you, by the way, funny thing is this, amazing thing is this, if you are, were a leper in that culture, you had to wear a mouth covering. <laughs> like you guys. <laughs> are you with me? And wherever you went, because you're a leper, you had to shout, you had to warn the people. All right? You had to tell the people you're coming so that they will duck. If they're coming in your direction, they will turn. Because leprosy was highly contagious, and according to the law of God, um, if you had leprosy, you first went to the priest. If the priest determined that you actually had leprosy, then you're quarantined, and two things will happen in quarantine. You either survived, <laughs> then if you survived, you had to go back for testing <laughs> to the priest and he had to give you a clean bill of health or you died. Either of the two. Are you with me? Because there was no cure. There was no vaccine for leprosy. Are you with me? So now we have four lepers. But again, also understand leprosy in the Bible. And Jesus Christ encountered a number of people who had leprosy and actually healed them. And this is not the only place we find lepers. Lepers were, I mean, in that culture, they were always there. Remember Naaman, who, this guy who was an army general, also had leprosy, you remember? All right? And, and some of them would be healed along the way. But leprosy also, for us, if you really uh, read, of course, especially the, the law of the leper in Leviticus, paints a picture for us, is symbolic, is what we call uh, in typology in the Old Testament, is, is a type of sin. In other words, it helps us to understand the effects of sin on a human being. Are you with me? See, because when you had leprosy, first of all, it will begin before it manifests on the outside, it will begin inside. So you could actually be walking around and you're asymptomatic. Why do these words sound so familiar? <laughs> All right? You're walking around. What people didn't know, you actually had leprosy. But then at some point, it will begin manifesting, and, 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 and this thing will progress so quickly and so rapidly, it will destroy your nervous system. All right? And eventually, eventually when somebody is almost dying out of leprosy, you will have probably lost your vision. In fact, they say that you've, it will have disfigured your face. You will have probably lost your nose or something. Uh, your, your hands will become immobile because you will begin losing your fingers. You actually also begin losing the sense of touch, the sense of uh, uh, sensation all over you because remember, it, it destroys the, the nervous system in your body. And eventually, by the time you're dying, your body, actually your skin will literally be rotting on your body. You will have lost the use of your hands. You will have lost the use of your legs. So you'll actually be there almost in a vegetative state and nobody will be able to come near you because of the stench that will be emanating out of your body. Isn't that what sin does? It begins on the inside. Nobody knows that probably you're carrying sin in your life. You look normal. You look like everything is okay. What they don't know is that you're leprous. Sin is killing you. And the wages of sin is death. Eventually we know Sin will kill you. Actually, sin will make you stink. Am I right? Suddenly nobody wants anything to do with you. Sin has a way of destroying our lives. And so now, as you're thinking of these four lepers, understand somewhere at the back of your mind that sin is also a picture. I mean, leprosy is a picture of sin in man. Now, because of that, then you and I then can conclude that the four lepers are you and I. <laughs> are you with me? Or are you and I? We were once leprous, but thanks be to God for his salvation. Now, I'm still painting this picture. Are you still there? I hope I have not lost you. 
All right, remember we began by the armor of God, which you are supposed to wear, uh, of course, all over your, to protect your body, and then so that you can prepare for the day of evil. So now we have come to, to Samaria, and the day of evil has come. The city is under siege, but in this city, there's a bunch of people who are, have been quarantined because they have leprosy. But we've also discovered that leprosy is a type of sin. It demonstrates to us the effects of sin on a man or a woman's life. Are you with me up to that point? Are you still there? All right? So let's begin joining these thoughts. Remember, we are talking about don't lose it. Are you with me? Don't lose it. So now, let's go back to chapter 6. All right? I know we are doing a lot of dancing here. Chapter 6. Now, we painted the picture of what was happening at the beginning. So now, because the situation is so desperate, all right, the situation is so desperate, now we are going to be told by the author, because the city is under siege, what happens? Certain things now begin to happen in quick succession before we come to the four lepers in chapter 7. Now, we've got to look at those in just a short while, but I want you also to understand that I'll be presenting to you, and of course, as I say, this is part one and part two, but in these two parts, I'll be presenting five things that you're not supposed to lose. Don't lose it. Five things. The first thing that you should not lose, don't lose your head. In this time, in the day of evil, don't lose your head. Number two, don't lose your heart. Number three, don't lose your hands. Number four, don't lose your feet. Are you with me? Don't lose your head. Don't lose your heart. Don't lose your hands. Don't lose your feet. So today, probably we'll just look at maybe two or three of them. We'll see how far, how far we'll be able to go. So now remember, the city, this is the day of evil in the, in the city of Samaria. So as a king was passing by the wall, that is in verse 26, a woman cried to him, help me, my lord, the king. Now remember, this is the king of the land. So this woman who is so desperate cries out to him. The king replied, notice what the king replied. He said, if the lord does not help you, where can I get help from? From the threshing floor, from the wine press? Notice, the king who is the head of the city? <laughs> when the woman cries to him, he says, if the Lord does not help you, where can I get help from? But then somehow he asks her, what is the matter? So she answered, now she gives this story, the woman said to me, give up your son so that we may eat him today, tomorrow we'll eat my son. So we cooked my son and ate him. The next day I say to her, they're talking about the son, not chicken. Right? The next day I say to her, give, us, give, me, give up your son so we may eat him, but she has hidden him. Along the wall. Now I want you to notice what, what the king did. Eh? The people looked and, 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 and there underneath he had sackcloth on his body. He said, look, may God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if the head of Elisha, <laughs> son of Shepherd, remains on his shoulders today. Because the king had lost headship, couldn't help his people, so he projects his frustration on the man of God. Are you seeing the picture here? Now, let's, let's talk about the head here a little bit more. Remember at the beginning, the picture that we are given is that things were so bad that the head of a donkey, are you with me? was so expensive. So the king can't help the people, although he's the head. So what does he want to do? He actually values, basically in his argument, the head of a donkey more than he values the head of the prophet. That's why now going back to the armor that we just talked about in Ephesians chapter 6, we are introduced to that we are supposed to have the helmet of Salvation. In the day of evil, don't lose your head in the battle. You're supposed to put on the helmet of salvation. Remember leprosy, one of the things that you will also lose, it will disfigure your head, it will disfigure your face. 
Don't lose your head. Now you're looking at me strangely. Tell your neighbor, don't lose your head. Put on the helmet of salvation. That's the only way you're not going to lose your head. And what does salvation? In fact, with me, I'm going to ask you very quickly to just stand with me to the book of Isaiah 59. Just stand to Isaiah 59 for us to be able to appreciate this a little bit much more. Now, Isaiah 59... Are you there? Now, Isaiah 59, look what the Bible says. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save. The helmet of salvation is not, the hand, the hand of the Lord is not too short, too short to, shave, to, to, shave, to save, nor his ear too dull to hear, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. In other words, in the day of evil, this is a picture being painted for us. In the day of evil, sometimes people forget that God's hand is not too short to, to save. To shave, to save, whatever. <laughs> are, you, are you with me? All right? So he said, his hand is not too, that's why you need to wear the helmet of salvation. And here is the deal. God is still able to save. Not only in eternity, because we are saved for eternity in our salvation, but even in this time, in the day of evil, God will save us. Are you with me? In other words, for me then, I have to keep reminding myself every day, no matter how the numbers look like, of the number of people who are dying, and I remember those first days, especially of the pandemic, and I remember the numbers were shocking us. We will be told in a day, somewhere in Europe, people will be dying by the thousands, and I know our hearts were gripped with fear, and, and, and people were afraid, wondering, Lord, will you save us? Is this the end of the world? I'm here to announce to you that our God will save. No wonder the psalmist said, I will not die but live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I declare to you the Lord will save. Put on the helmet of salvation. Don't lose your head. Verse 17 actually of the same Isaiah 59 says this. Now having said that, that the arm of the Lord is not too short to save. Uh, he says, put, he put on uh, he put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in, as in a cloth. It begins in Isaiah 59 at the beginning there, talking about the desperate situation because of sin. God's people had lost the fact that God saved. But then now, God himself comes now down there and he says, that he himself will put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation. Don't lose your head. I say don't lose your head. Let your head remain on top of your shoulders. In this day of trouble, in the day of evil, we still need to proclaim that God saves. And not only in eternity. We thank God for that salvation that we have in eternity because we know when we live this life, we will spend eternity with him. But I'm also talking about even in this day of evil, he will not allow the enemy to swallow us alive. He will not allow coronavirus to swallow us alive. Isn't it been a miracle, friends, when we look at the numbers in Africa? Well, we are sorry that there are so many people who have suffered, so many people have died, but somehow, Africa was supposed to have been the worst hit by this thing. But we are still here. Is it because we are better than the West? Is it because we are, we are greater than them? In fact, if there are people who are more vulnerable, will be the Africans. Oh, how I wish they will come and find out from us what is happening. By the way, it's not because Africans have a special immunity. It is simply because we have not lost our heads. It's because we have some Africans who know how to pray. It's because we know we have some Christians who know how to do some spiritual warfare. The only reason we are still here, the only reason that virus did not take the better of us is because we have not lost our salvation. Jehovah saves and Jehovah will continue saving us in the name of Jesus. So don't lose your head. If you had already lost your head, please get it back on. Don't lose your salvation. Listen, this is not the time to lose your salvation. 
This is not the time to go back and start doing crazy things. This is not the time to start doing all manner of, 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 of things that you are not supposed to be mentioned among God's people. Don't lose your salvation. Even in this pandemic, when people ask and people have been asking and believers have been asking, where is your God? Let's keep telling them our God saves. Our God saves. How he will do it, I don't know, but I know he saves. Oh, come on, somebody in this house. And by the way, even if this is the end of the world, our God still saves. Are you with me? So don't lose your head. So let's go to your hands. No, actually, let's first go to your heart. Don't lose your heart. And then we'll be wrapping it up there, and then we'll pick it up next Sunday. But are you getting anything out of this? So going back to 2 Kings chapter 6. So notice, so the king there is stuck. So now, but I want to now to go back there in verse 28. So verse 28, when the king asked the woman, and she answered, this woman said to me, give up your son. Now that story there, I've already read it, so we'll not be able to read it again. But notice, I want you to notice something there. Something is off. In this day of evil, something is off. This woman is talking about eating her children, eating her son, eating human beings, as though she's talking about eating chicken. Have you noticed something is wrong with that conversation? There is something that is so off in that conversation. And for her, as she's crying out to the king, she's not crying out to the king in remorse that, oh, by the way, we killed our son because we were hungry. Her problem is that the other woman did not keep her side of the bargain. We ate my son. We had agreed after we eat mine. <laughs> the city had lost his heart. Haven't seen, seen that even in this day of evil? Guess what happens in the day of evil? People begin devouring their children. More than ever before in this country, how many teenage pregnancies have happened during this pandemic? And who is making those little girls pregnant? It is adults. Sometimes it is fathers, it is uncles family friends, close acquaintances of the family. What does that tell us? In the day of evil, sometimes people turn because they have lost their heart and begin devouring the very ones they're supposed to be protecting. The vulnerable become a target. Don't lose your heart. It is in the day of evil when people become so heartless that even in a time like this, you are stealing money that is meant to save lives, and you feel nothing about it, and you even bring a tithe out of it because people have lost their heart. It's more wonder the Apostle Paul, in Ephesians chapter 6, part of the armor, he says, to wear the breastplate of righteousness. In other words, in the day of evil, Let's keep doing right. What does righteousness mean? Righteousness means being the right person. Keep doing the right thing. Even when it doesn't make sense, keep doing the right thing. Even when you're tempted, keep doing. And I know it's a, it's a, it's a great temptation for so many people. When you can't put food on the table, when you can't pay rent, You've lost your job. Your business has gone down. And maybe a lucrative opportunity comes. Or the only thing is that you have to grease a few palms. Maybe you, you just have to compromise here and there. So that you can, and, and sometimes you can justify yourself and saying, I'm doing this for my children. Don't lose your heart. I say, don't lose your heart. I say, don't, please don't feed your children with coronavirus money. Don't, you didn't hear me. Don't feed your family with money taken from bribes. Don't feed your children. Don't pay your bills with ill-gotten wealth. And I'm telling you this as a servant of God, you will bring a curse on yourself. You will bring a curse on the next generation. Don't lose your heart. Keep your heart. 
Small wonder, Proverbs chapter 4 tells us, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life, or for it is the wellspring of life. Guard your heart. Come on, put your hand on your chest. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Remember, we are lepers. Eventually, the leper's heart will stop beating and he will die. Don't die. On the, this is not the season. You remember just before we went, I was going to say on a break, just before the lockdown happened, we had a, I did a series, Don't Die in the Wilderness. Yeah. This is not the time to die. <laughs> Don't lose your heart. Because the wages of sin is death. You'd rather go and tell your children, listen, kids, I lost my job. I can't put food on your table. I'm sorry, but you have to go to bed hungry. But let's believe God. I remember my father, I grew up in a poor home. And there were times that were difficult. But my father never once fed us on anything that was stolen, even in desperate times. He always tells us, kids, let's pray. Who knows? Maybe God will answer your prayer. Who knows? Maybe one of you, God will have mercy on you and answer your prayer. Don't lose your heart. Not in this time if you're a young lady. Please don't lose your heart. Don't give your body to some fool so that you can be able to pay rent. If it means you need to downsize, downsize. If you can't pay 20,000 shilling rent, look for, for a smaller house. But just don't lose your heart. Because in the day of evil, stand after you have done all. Please be found to be standing with your dignity. They may have taken my car, but I still have my dignity. They may have taken my house, but I still have my dignity. I may have lost my job, but I still have my dignity. I may have lost everything, but I still have my dignity. I may have been reduced to selling burgers on the streets, but I still. So that you can stand. And having done all to stand. Don't lose your heart. Part two next Sunday. I say part two next Sunday because you, I have to release you so that we can get in the next service. Every head bowed, every eye closed. As we're coming to the close of this service, you're here, you're saying, Pastor, <laughs> I lost my head. I lost my salvation. Or maybe I've never even been born again. And you're saying today I came to church desperate. But you're saying today I also came to church. And having heard the word, I want to invite Jesus to come into my life. If that is you, you're saying you want to be born again. Very quickly, we don't have a lot of time. I'm going to pray for you. Just lift up your hand. You're saying I want to be saved. I want to be saved. Maybe I went back. Maybe I did some things that I shouldn't have in this time. I lost my head. I lost hope. Or maybe you're saying, I just came to church, but I'm not born again. If that is you, please, very quickly, wherever you are, lift up your hand. Just shoot it up from wherever you are, and I'll sit and I'll pray for you. And we pray that God will come and save you. He will come and save you. He'll come and give you a new beginning, a new start. Father, thank you for your people. Thank you for this Sunday. Lord, we thank you that you brought us together again just to worship you. Would you just want to take a moment one more time? Lift up those hands and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the gathering of your people. Thank you that we got to be part of this. Hallelujah. And Father, I just want to speak your blessing over your people, Lord. Even as we've looked into your word. And I pray that none of us will lose our heads. And none of us will lose our hearts, Lord even in this day of evil. And I pray that we shall all stand. We shall be found to be standing in the name of Jesus.
So I speak your blessing, the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit over your people. And may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May the Lord provide for you every need. May he bless the work and the labor of your hands. May the Lord watch over you. May he protect you. May he, may he put a shield around you and protect you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely goodness and mercy all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a victorious week.